Hi everyone, El Ingalls here, and this is the Pressure Free Leadership Conference for June 2023. And the next speaker that I'm bringing on in this next segment um, is truly my best friend and um, colleague. We met, I always forget, 2018? 17. 2017. <laughs> 2017. And I think Jeff just mentioned in the last segment, Jeff mentioned about accountability. So 2017, July, I'm in a program, a coaching program with a coach out of Florida. We're on a call, a virtual call about accountability partners and about accountability. And um, so I already had two accountability partners in that particular program, to, to be clear. We get off the call and this woman here, Leela Veronica, sends me a direct message immediately says, I want to be your accountability partner. I'd never met her, right? except in the group, right? So I immediately dish back, I already have two. And she goes, do you meet with them every day? And I said, no, once a week. And she says, I want to meet with you every day. So anyway, we got on a call and we had a conversation and she wanted us to meet every single weekday. Um, to be very clear, to push our businesses forward, to serve each other, to be accountable to each other. Um, and I said, yes. And the rest is history. We've done joint retreats together. We have brought clients to each other. The, she has changed my life so profoundly and I've changed hers so profoundly um, that I feel incredibly blessed. She's young enough to be my daughter. <laughs> so I love having people of different generations in my life. <laughs> which is great. Um, but Leela, come on in, introduce yourself, and let's get right into what you want to share today. Oh, thank you so much, Miss L. Ingalls. I wouldn't say thank you. Everybody let's give her just a big applause for bringing leaders together, um, you know, offering this opportunity for everybody to learn more about how to elevate your leadership, how to reduce those, you know, things that are keeping you from being the best version of yourself, the best leader of yourself, the best leader of others. You know, Elle is a queen of, of being able to really gather brilliant people from all around the world. And I'm really grateful to be here today. Thank you, Elle, for, for doing this. I, I really appreciate it. It's, You're welcome. It, it, there's a ripple effect for sure. I've met a lot of people through your conferences and, and I'm very grateful. Um, yeah, like Elle said, we met in 2017. I um, have been through the pressure-free certification program that she has uh, in her business that she provides, and Elle has been in my body programs. And um, what's neat is I'm going to tell a little story before we start. I'll tell you a little bit about what I do and then a little story, and then I'll get into some, some really cool. What I'm going to talk about today is actually dynamic posture how to have dynamic posture so that you have a higher level of energy and you feel more grounded at the same time. So I'm a, a high performance coach. I coach um, business owners and high level executives um, to change the way that they show up in their physical form so that they're more attractive and have greater ease not attractive like looking, but more attractive magnetically, energetically. People want to work with them. People want to be around them. And then also to uh, reduce the amount of stress and energy that's really pushing people away and getting in the way of being a strong leader. Uh, there's a lot of people doing mindset work in the world, and I think it's phenomenal. I've done a lot. I still do a lot. What I'm going to share with you today is the body that goes along with the mindset. So we need to move our body, shift our body into a new state in order to actually become the mindset that we want. And that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. I'm gonna to show you in three super simple steps and you can apply it today. We're gonna to actually do it together today. I wanna to tell you a little story first. So I coach people all around the world. I've coached people on all seven continents, even in Antarctica, which I'm really proud of. And I speak a lot. And I was at a conference recently speaking. I met a woman um, who introduced me to another woman. Okay. 
She said, you need to talk to this woman. We'll just call her Mary today. That's not her name. We'll call her Mary. So I set up an appointment, uh, a meeting with Mary. And uh, the the day that we're supposed to meet, she gets uh, the time wrong that we're supposed to meet, which pressure free here. That's okay. You know, that's okay. It's all meant to be. I trust the process of life. We'll just reschedule. No problem. Just before today's conference, I got a message from Mary saying, I'm taking two weeks off of my business and social media and everything because I'm in burnout. So, of course, I'm super caring about Mary because, you know, so now we're, we're going to reschedule the meeting. Same thing. I'm pressure free. That's fine. No, no worries here. But I care about this person. And I and I've seen her on uh, we're social media friends. I've seen her posts and the work she does, and she's so excited. And what I can tell, I haven't talked to her yet, but what I can tell is that she's overexcited. She's super elevated and adrenalized. So some of us will tend towards being overexcited, overworking, overdoing, you know, and over adrenalized. And then some people go into the more state where they maybe under perform under you know do under work kind of get more of in that depressed state versus the over um uh excited state but the thing is is both of them create the same results we don't become the people that we want to be we don't honor our you know commitments that we want to we can't move forward as leaders we can't lead the people we can't lead ourselves if we're in burnout Either way, we're, whether we're overexcited or underexcited. And I know this well because I, I had tended toward the overexcited. Go, 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 do, 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 work, work, work. I used to be in academia and I faced a point of burnout just like this Mary woman I just heard from today. And I was I remember being on the couch for about a week and like barely being able to get up. And I thought, wow, what is wrong with me? And what I recognized is that I was, you know, after years of learning and then meeting L, is that I had, you know, the burnout come came from a physical exertion of elevating stress hormones. And so I've been on this journey for the last decade of learning, embodying, and then teaching high performers how to not burn out, how to embody sustainable energy so that we can actually be higher level performers and happier, healthier, um, and easier to get along with. <laughs> and so, <laughs> so I, I really feel, I, I, I said to her, cause it was right before I hopped on, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to leave you a message after I'm on this conference today. I'm going to give you some ideas about how to make sure this never happens again. So I'm going to plug L real quick because, you know, we're all here for her, but I'm going to show you some body posture today, but first I want to say, if you're not familiar yet with L's modality, you 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 should be. Everybody, everybody in the whole world should be. If you if you know what she does, she helps you prevent stress chemicals, hormones, the the all of you know that chemicals that release in the body from releasing in the body. So there's no such thing as pr stress management with her. It's literally preventing it in the first place. And so what I'm going to do, and I mean, it's completely changed my life. I've been able to, um, you know, uh, help more people across the world, make more money, stay healthier, you know, have better relationships. I'm, I'm just, I can float through life versus having to kind of push through life. And, and, and I used to be so, you know, overexcited about stuff and then get drained and then overexcited and get drained and that, that seesaw. And you may not be, having that experience yourself, but you might know somebody that's having that seesaw experience. And so if you can learn from Elle, uh, from any of her students that have been through the certification, you know, how to not release the stress in the first place, um, your total, everybody's life would change and we wouldn't have problems going on in the world like we do. I'm going to plug you there, Elle. So the reason I Elle and I have more friends... that's going to come on too, and Mort is one of the first people I've ever met. I've, I have a lot of people, a lot of contacts, and I can't wait for Mort to speak too because he's he's very similar to me. It's going to be so cool. So I'm so happy that you're sharing that. 
I love it. And and so what what's neat about what Elle and I do together is that, she, like she said, she's worked with clients that I've worked with and we've I've worked with clients that she's worked with and we've done retreats together and workshops and all of this stuff because the, what I'm about to show you is I'm going to show you the physical form of being without stress in your body. This is what a body would look like, not a, exactly, but the shape, uh, the form dictates function. And so if you want to be a leader, you need to bring your body into the game, not just the mind, the thinking. One of the most famous, the um, or most watched, the second most watched TED Talk is the TED Talk with Amy Cuddy and the power posture. You may or may not know about it, but there's, you know, science around um, the the good, yummy, feel good, positive chemicals that are released in your body when you have a particular physical form. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take it a little bit further than Amy Cuddy does in that video. Um, and I'm going to show you how to have not just static standstill posture, but some dynamic posture. I'm going to actually show you how to sit at your computer differently, how to walk differently, how to stand differently. So be ready to stand up and move around today if you want. If you've been sitting for a hot minute, it might feel good anyways. So before we get started, I just want you to know there's three H's that I'm going to teach you today. Three H's. There's the heart, there's the hips, and there's the head. Before I stand up and show you, I want you to imagine a skeleton in a science class you might have taken or seen on TV or somewhere in a laboratory. Think about the skeleton, the way it hangs. It doesn't hang where the, the spine is straight. It actually hangs where the spine is curvy. Little, can anybody give me sparkle fingers if you, if you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So a curvy, yeah, cool. The spine is curvy. It's actually not straight. So we're told to stand up straight, put your shoulders back. It's not natural. And it actually diminishes your energy. And so what I'm going to show you is how to have a more natural open body so that you can be more natural and open in your business, in your career, in your relationships, everywhere, even in the grocery store. If you start doing this, people will start saying things to you. They'll be like, what are you, what are you doing? Who are you? They'll lean in, right? Oh, we've seen this. It's I just to share. <laughs> We're at the airport, Denver airport. She's dropping me off to go back to Michigan. And we get out of the car and we're saying goodbye. And the guy parked in front of us leaves his car to come over to us and say, I don't know who you are, but I want that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it was an over excitement. It was full energy. Like that's how I could explain it, you know? Yeah, full flowing energy that's bright that's expansive like we know that the the heart has a magnetic field of i i don't know what it is now they've measured it like 10 12 feet 14 feet something so we have this energy body you know that's beyond us that we can't see but people feel it you know if you're somewhere and someone's staring at you right you can kind of feel it you're looking around and they're staring and they're staring at you right so we know there's this energy thing going on and there's been scientific research that's shown the magnetic field of the heart and then we have this electrical field from our, our thinking. And so that, that field can be big or it can be small. And as leaders, we want it to be as big as possible, not in a pushy way, but in an open way so that people can, you know, you, you're inviting them in and you're, they trust you um, because you're not holding tight and small. So I'm going to show you, I'm actually going to move my stool back. I'm going to show you first how to sit differently so most people think that you're supposed to sit on your butt on your bum on your glutes what i'm going to tell you today is practice this test it out see how it feels sit on your legs so you can even stand up now and sit on your legs sit on your legs you might have to pull your bum back depending on your chair sit on your legs and and what you're doing here is we're taking the tailbone back instead of tailbone down Think about a dog, an animal, when they tuck their tail, their tail is down, it's a position of fear. So you're in a, you're telling your mind you're in a fear position, even if you're not really scared about anything. So you might trigger fight or flight, you might, you know, lose that energy, that big flowing 
magnetic energy just by sitting on your butt too much. Another thing is a lot of us will sit back on the chair and maybe you have back issues and, and, and this will take a little time. And if you need help, I'm here for you. But if, you know, it, it might take a little time, but if you're constantly in your chair and sitting back and your tail is tucking and, and, and your belly's, you know, kind of tight and, and you're going to lose energy. So if you get tired later in the day, it could just be the way you're sitting. So you want to pull your butt up. You want to sit on your legs more. And then another key piece is if you can sit in a way where your hips are a little bit above your knees. So the, the positioning of your leg bone here, it's either going to be knees up and your leg is crunching into your hips, knee down, and that bone is gonna float away from your hips. A lot of people have hip issues. And when your body hurts, your mind is not as focused as it could be. So my intention is to help you keep a strong mind, keep strong energy by doing a few body uh, shifts. So knees below your hips, sit on your legs. So that's the hip part. Your heart, we want your heart all the time, as often as you can, as much as you can all day long to gently lift up to the sky. So heart up and even float your heart forward just a little bit. So your whole rib cage is really your heart area. Heart up and forward, hips back. And then the last piece is head up where your eyes look out onto the horizon. So we tend to look really close, really close uh, within a couple feet even of, of you know, our vision. And what we need to do is we need to look more out into the distance. At least once an hour, look away from your computer if you're working on your computer, look up and out and away. Like you're looking out onto the sunset, the sunrise, looking out into the mountains or beautiful prairie. You know what it feels like in your body when you look out into a beautiful vista. Sparkle fingers, if you know that feeling of it feels really good to look out into something. Yeah, yeah. So it's a it's a the the physical form looking out into the distance creates a feel good state in the body. So you know it's good for you. Just trust me on that. We go on to a more, but you know it's good for you because you've experienced it before. You're like, oh, so what if you could experience that every day? Every day, look out, eyes in the horizon. So heart up, hips back, and head lifted. So this is the way to sit. This is the way to drive. If you drive, I often tell people, instead of having your arms right next to you all the time, this is closing off actually the sides of your heart, the sides of your breath. Your breath is your life force energy. So you need to open those elbows. See if you can type a little bit on your computer with the elbows wide. Drive with your elbows wide. It's weird at first, right, Elle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she does My husband it. calls me a robot. He thinks I'm a robot when I drive. <laughs> it's weird at first, but what happens is we lose lateral movement as we age. We lose side body uh, flexibility and fluidity, and we need to keep our whole 3D body open, alive, and, and fluid. And so when you bring your arms up, and maybe you have tight shoulders, it might take a little time, so just practice a little bit, and then you can bring them down and then practice a little bit more, and then you can bring them down. But keep that whole heart energy when you drive, when you're sitting, and then I'm gonna show you standing. So it's the same thing. It's heart, hips, and head. So we have been told to stand up straight. When we stand up straight, our tailbone tucks, our, we've been told to have flat abs, so our abs go tight and our chin tucks. 
think about when you hear a loud noise and so, or something startles you. One of the first things you're going to do is tighten those abs, tuck that tail. So imagine the opposite. Instead of being in that tight, straight, rigid, more fear body position, imagine being the opposite of that. So letting the belly go, which is very hard for some people in the beginning. It took me six months to let my belly go. I was always told to have flat abs, flat abs. My abs look better now than when I was trying to have flat abs, you guys. So trust me, it'll work, <laughs> right, Elle? Yeah. It does work. So let the belly button go away from the spine instead of pulling tight. That'll help big time. So three H's, heart, rib cage, is gonna go forward and up a little bit. You're gonna have your mind in your heart. A lot of people say live from the heart. This is how. This is actually the how. It's not just a conceptual idea. It's an actual action-based way to live in the heart. Bring your mind to your ribs, your heart area. Lift it up to the sky now, just gently. It's just a millimeters. Heart up, heart up, ribs up, ribs up, ribs up. Lift it up, 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 up. Even as you're sitting. Keep that resistance, heart up, and a little bit of a bend in your knee. So you can try it out. You can stand if you want, no pressure but you can stand up. And then when you bend your knees a little bit, what you'll notice is you can wag your tail. So it feels weird at first. I've worked with a lot of women who are scared to like move their hips because it might look sexy, right? And that's not, that's not part of their demeanor. And, but, but it feels good and it's healthier for you. And it doesn't have to be huge sways of the hip, just a little bit of a bend in your knee and what you'll notice is when your heart is up, your knees are bent, you can wag your tail, hips, they go back a little bit, same as sitting. Heart up, hips back. If you can't wag your tail, you're a little too rigid. There's opportunity to be more fluid, that's it. Practice just for this week, see what happens. Over the weekend, see if you can wag your tail a little bit. It'll feel awkward sometimes at first, but it gets easier over time. The last piece, heart up, hips back, and then head lifted, eyes out on the horizon. Any fully embodied, strong leader will have this stance. They won't be rigid. They'll be grounded. They'll be in their body. Their head will be lifted. Their shoulders will be broad. They'll be looking out into the distance. Think about somebody who's a speaker and has to speak in front of thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, maybe even 100,000 people in a stadium. Their eyes have to be lifted and out into the horizon. And so you can, even at home, at the grocery store, while you're going to your kids' soccer games, anywhere, you can start to embody the stronger body of a leader. One thing I love that Elle said before is Leela helped me create a body that can do more. And that's what I want for everybody, not to overwork you, but to have the energy. And so the last piece is when you sit, you do heart forward and up, hips back, head up. When you stand, heart up, hips back head lifted. Same thing when you walk. Lead from the heart. Don't lead from the feet and don't look down. Start to initiate the movement when you walk from your heart. A little bit of a tail wag and eyes on the horizon. So you might walk from your car to the house. You might go for a walk in the morning. Notice, are you collapsing in your heart? Are you collapsing tailbone down? And are you looking down? If so, just try it out. Heart up, hips back, head lifted. And the last thing to show you is that the reason this is called a dynamic posture, it's different. A static posture staying still, like Amy Cuddy teaches. Beautiful. 
Amy Cuddy teaches, you know, you're, you can stay still here. What I'm teaching you is to be more dynamic, more in movement, even in stillness. So if you have ideas that are flowing through you, I always say you're one step closer to making them happen when you're in a body shape that's more fluid and more dynamic. It's more dynamic also because if you were to take a jump, a leap, that's the shape that your body would take. So if you're standing still, straight legs, you still have to bend your knees to walk forward. So you're one step closer to everything you want when you're in the dynamic shape. So good. <laughs> so Heart good. Up, hips back, head lifted. So back to that day that I met her, the reason I said, okay, I'll do this with you is because I'd never seen anybody who had the posture that she did, anybody, and how she moved and what she did. And I wanted that because I always had crappy posture. I grew tall in eighth grade and didn't want to be. So I had the rounded shoulders and the tucked tail. I tucked my tail because I thought that's what I was supposed to do to get a straight spine. And I had hip problem. I'm a hip dysplasia. I like a German shepherd with my babies. <laughs> you know, I had all this stuff. And now I've gone years now with, without any pain, thanks to this woman. So it was really cool. I'm so glad you shared. I mean, for some people it might feel weird to have your glutes back, but it has transformed my life. Like Vanessa had come on and talked about posture. When I sit in my car, I don't even need to at a stoplight change my posture because my posture is always in the frame because my glutes are back. That's the simple thing. And, and I used to tell my violin students, you know, they'd say, we work on a hard piece and go, oh, but Mrs. Ingalls, I can't. I go, there's no butts in my studio. Like there's no butts, right? <laughs> I go, we sit on our butts. But now I can't even say that. It's like, we don't sit on our butts. We sit on our leg bones. Right? Like, it's just <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much, Leela. I mean, super powerful. Um, I actually, I'm in my fifth round of doing her her 42-day challenge of of this kind of movement thing. She works privately with clients. Um, and she also is a business coach, an amazing business coach too. So, um, so I'm just grateful you're in my life and um, thank you so much for sharing. Any parting thoughts for everybody? I, I wanna answer Stephen's question here. Yeah. He says, um, what advice do you have for me? Because I suffer from degenerative disc disease with severe sciatic nerve pain to help with my dynamic shake posture. Well, um, the sciatic nerve runs through a very the reason that sciatic anybody ever here experienced sciatica anybody else yeah i know i've experienced it too it's not it's very uncomfortable there's a and i've done cadaver labs i've actually seen there's a teeny little hole that that nerve runs through and um when it gets any pressure on it it's like you know down the leg so um the one thing that i would say there's well there's two things one for the um, the degeneration in the disc, when we open the side bodies, the lateral, and then start, what I do in my movement practices, I teach you how to do some pulsing. It'll start to create more space. So L, for example, has gotten taller. A lot of my clients will get taller. I've grown taller. Um, I never thought I would be taller. It's so, so wild. So we can actually create more space by opening the, the, the sides first. There's ways that I show you how to do it um, and pulsing to open space. And then the, the second piece is if we can get your hips to do more of an anterior tilt and men have a less mobility in that area than women. So it, it's, um, it takes a little time, but if we can get your hips to do an anterior tilt, that sciatic nerve hole will open up. So if you ever want to, I offer, um, if, if it'd be okay, I can put in, uh, I offer uh, like a free posture assessment. I can show you a couple of things if you ever want to hop on a Zoom, no pressure, but um, but I'm here for you because I'm always like all about getting people out of pain. Like it, there, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. We're going to stop this one. So thank you everybody else for tuning into Leela and on to our next speaker. Thank you, Leela. Leela?